This podcast is brought to you by Uconnect, the creator of the first all-in-one virtual career center. Scale your impact and engage more students with a platform that puts all of your career resources in one place. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Career Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Metzger, and this week I'm excited to welcome Junior Delgado. He's the director of the Career Center at Westfield State University and the current president of the Eastern Association of Colleges and Employers. In this episode, I talk with Junior about how to build allies across campus through genuine interactions. Junior shares how he's built so many partnerships in his 20 plus years at Westfield, how he's leveraged them in his work as a career services leader, and why it's so important to approach these relationships with authenticity. Junior, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today and spend some time talking about career everywhere and other subjects of interest. (laughs) Love it. Well, I'm really glad to have you. For those of you listening, Junior is kind of a legend in career services. He's worked in career services at Westfield State University for over 22 years and has led the Career Center for the last 13 of those. He also teaches several courses at Westfield, including speech and career development, And correct me if I'm wrong, Junior, but didn't you also coach basketball there at one point? Yes, I did at Westfield uh, about 10 years ago. I was the associate head coach. So I've coached at a couple of places. I coached at Westfield State, which was my longest stint. I was also a recruiting assistant at Elms College. And then I also was an assistant coach at Springfield Technical Community College. And by the way, all of those years that you mentioned have all been in the exact same office. Like physically the same office? (laughs) Physically the same exact office. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're a man of many talents. (laughs) And I I think it's fair to say that you are deeply embedded in your campus community um, and you have a lot of experience building relationships with all kinds of people from all walks of life, which is why I'm just really excited to talk to you today about how to build allies across campus through genuine interactions. Because as we all know, partnerships and collaboration are everything, especially if you've got really big goals and maybe a small team, and especially if you work in career services. But it can also be notoriously difficult sometimes to build those bridges across campus. But luckily, we have an expert with us here today with Junior. So before I get into the questions, Junior, is there anything else you'd like to add about yourself, your background, or your role at Westfield? Yes, thank you. So a couple of quick things that I always like to um, share, and I think being able to to share a little bit about your authentic self is also always important. At least I start all my presentations when I'm talking to students with that. And so I think I'll do the same. So I am a first generation college student. I'm also bilingual. So Spanish is my first language. The other thing that I would say is, and sometimes this rubs people the wrong way, I'm a Notre Dame football fan. So go (laughs) Irish. Uh, I'm also a huge college football fan. Uh, The other thing is I'm a father to a nine-year-old girl. And what I have noticed in life is that I don't have the same energy to match my child. (laughs) And now what I'm doing presently, which is really interesting, is that time of year. So it's Girl Scouts cookies. Mm. So I'm selling Girl Scout cookies this time of year. I'm helping my daughter. I'm partnering with her. And the last thing, something that I have been doing probably for less than a year, but really enjoying it. It really ties into what I do with my public speaking is I'm also doing some voiceover artist work. So that's something newer that I've been doing. Oh, that's awesome. And also, I might have to buy some Thin Mints from your daughter because (laughs) now you've got me thinking about Girl Scout cookies. (laughs) But thank you for that additional uh, information about you. Now, before I get into the more specific questions, I want to kick us off with a question that I've been asking everyone on the podcast so far. What does Career Everywhere mean to you? That is an awesome, awesome question because I think that when I look at that statement, It really has a lot of different meanings to me. And I think from a global perspective, career everywhere is all around us. The small moments, the opportunities to collaborate with individuals and have conversations about what people want to do, about what people want to do for work, where they see themselves, their goals, that has career everywhere embedded all over that. The other thing that I would say is from a campus perspective, and when we talk about students for career everywhere, I'm sure that others have this this same type of view, but I I look at it as that we're ensuring that our students have the experiences and opportunities to follow their chosen path in life, because it's going to be different for every single individual. So again, career everywhere, it is something that is all around us. Uh, if If you think about it, when you have conversations with people, what's the first thing most times people say other than, hello, how are you doing? What do you do? 
So people always want to know. So Career Everywhere is, is not just on our college campuses, but it is everywhere in our lives. That's a really good point. I love that perspective because it's true. And any networking, it's what do you do? It's almost like our identities are sometimes tied to it a little bit for better or worse. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, it is everywhere. I mean, Career Everywhere is so important now more than ever, especially on our college campuses. Those are the conversations that we want to be having with our students. Yeah, I love that. I've said that in a few different interviews for this podcast so far, but I wish that I had access to some of these resources or at least these strategies that I hear all of you talking about. Yeah, I know it's going to make a huge difference for this next generation of college students. Do you offer labor market data to your students and other on-campus stakeholders? Having access to top hiring companies, skill and education requirements, salaries, and more can be a critical tool in career exploration and advancement. That's why Uconnect is offering a free trial of our Labor Market Insights module, powered with data from our partners at Lightcast, a leading labor market data company. To learn more, visit gouconnect.com slash LMI. That's L as in labor, M as in market, and I as in insights. Start your free trial today. All right, so now I wanna get into our topic today, which is how to build allies across campus through genuine interactions. So like I mentioned earlier, you've been doing this for decades there at Westfield. And can you just first tell me what you mean by genuine interactions and why that's so key to this process? Yes, and it is something that I truly believe that I live. And I think that what I mean by genuine interactions is actually taking the time to care about those around you whether that is a colleague, a coworker, whether that is a student, a prospective student, a prospective family. I think being genuine is so important because people, well, we live in a world where there is a lot of social media, a lot of things are manufactured and people can see through that. But when you're honestly genuine with people on your campus and such things as as simple as good morning, how are you doing? How was your weekend? How's your family? If you do have family, um, how was that test? How was your athletic contest? How did that go? Those things, although we might think are so small and minute, are very, very important in building general consensus, building relationships with our students, building relationships with our colleagues, because that is important, taking an interest in people. And I think as you and I had talked a couple of days ago, this is the one thing that I believe in. It is so true because I, I remember reading this and it really stuck with me that most of the time, if not always, when people are talking to you, you are not paying a lick of attention. You are not even present because your mind is so focused on everything else that you have going on. What am I gonna eat for lunch? What's my next meeting look like? Did I prepare that assignment? I need to get to that contest. I've got to go grocery shopping today. And so you're not really hearing what the other person is saying to you. And sometimes it's something as simple as, how do I contact the registrar's office? And your mind is somewhere completely different. And so I think that being able to genuinely listen, but more importantly, actively listen to what people are saying. And this is no surprise, being present in the moment with that individual, I think is also important when it comes to genuine interaction. So again, giving of yourself that time to value someone else, because if I want someone to hear me, then I should also pay that back and hear what the other person has to say. I love that. That's what I mean by genuine interaction. It is a two way, works both ways. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I hear you when you talk about the difficulty in staying present and doing active listening. That's something I, you know, I have to work through with these podcast interviews is being present and making sure I'm actively listening. And it can be a challenge sometimes, but it's the conversations you have are so much more meaningful and deep when you do that. Absolutely. And again, that is a challenge for everyone. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I think that's a challenge yeah. for every single human being. It really is because again, you want to be present with the individual and that also that genuine interaction leads into letting that person know that you actually care, especially if they come to you with a problem. And I always equate it to students when they come with problems, we want to help. We want to help solve their problems. We want to get them answers. We don't want to pick up 
the phone and say, here, call 10 other people before you get your answer. We want to help solve that for them or at least provide the assist in getting them to the right answer. So being genuine with everyone that we interact with, I think is important. Yeah, for sure. So now that we kind of talked about what genuine interaction means to you, let's dig into the how. So how do you go about using those genuine interactions to build allies across campus? So there's a couple of things that I would say, and I think that longevity has truly helped me being here. But not only the longevity, I also think that being able to get to want to know people in a particular department, because again, I'm going to have to work with all of these individuals on, on my campus. And so some have become friends, colleagues. And so because I'm working with them, I have to take an interest in what others are doing. Because again, if I go out and I'm sharing the message of career everywhere and the career center, and you want to engage with us and you want to send your students to us, but I'm not taking an active role in really getting to know the biology department and the members of the biology department. And if I'm not taking an active role in getting to know the team from student activities, then again, how can I have it work the other way and just always say like, come to us, come to us, come to us and, and send your students to us. So I think that there has to be that intentionality and that intentionality of getting to know people across your campus. Now, you're not always going to have the time to get to everybody. But one strategy that is important is thinking about your, your own areas of interest. And so for me, my areas of interest are athletics. So I have made that a priority to get to know the coaches to get to know the teams, to support the team so that when there is a basketball game, when there is a softball game or a baseball game or whatever it might be, a soccer game, to show up because I think there is a value in students seeing you in places that are outside of the classroom. I think it's also important to take an interest when others around campus are doing special programs. Maybe there's some sort of presentation from undergraduate research. Maybe there's a play that a faculty member wrote, put together and produced. And so being able to take those areas of interest, because we all have er different areas of interest and being able to show up to build those relationships. I mean, some of the strategies as well can be as simple as contacting a department and saying, could we come to your meeting just for five minutes to introduce ourselves? I'd like to get to know the members of your department. So those strategies don't have to be big things where you're standing on top of the um, middle place of your campus and you're singing and screaming like, this is us. The Career Center is here. <laughs> I think a lot of our wins, and I use the word wins, are through those one-on-one -on -one departmental, any type of department on campus, whether that be academic or not, is the way that we've, or at least that I have for the last 20 years, have built allies on our campus. I'm curious, why are these relationships so important to your work and, and to you personally? Because I know I know they are, I can tell. <laughs> okay, of course, of course. So for me, again, it, one of the things that I'm always going to say about our campus is, first, I, I love Westwood State University. So I will say that. But I think what I have seen in this campus is I see our students are a reflection of who I am. Many of our students are first generation. We have students of color on our campus. We have students that work all the time. And so we're, I, I'm going to say blue collarish, I think is the word that I want to look for. And so that's my background. So I think that that's what, why I resonate with the public state institution as well that is educating the masses. I think that also resonates with me. And so the reason why these relationships being genuine, being intentional are so important. We are all here for a purpose and our purpose is to work with students to build the next future leaders, the next workers of wherever they decide to go in the world in whatever field they decide to choose. And so I want to ensure that we impact every single group on campus. Again, I may not get to all 4,000 students, but I know that through some of these collaborations, the messages that we share, the interactions that we have, if it's a positive interaction with one faculty member, that faculty member is going to go into their classes and say, hey, have you visited the Career Center? Did you know that they have resource A, B, C, and D for you? And so I think the importance of these relationships is that so that we're building a career network, that it isn't just the four or five staff members in the Career Center selling the message, that it becomes a university-wide message. And I think that that applies at every institution. When I talk to some of my colleagues as well at other career centers, that is the message. They want to build as many allies as possible on their campuses so that their message spreads to all of their students in every facet, whether you're an art student or you're a health science student or you're the PA student, that you understand that the institution is there for your success. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like we were talking about earlier, it can be kind of 
a notorious challenge to build those allies across campus. In your mind, what are some of those common challenges and how have you addressed those in the way that you build relationships? So I think a lot of times there is fear, fear of rejection, fear of someone not liking you, fear of a different philosophy in the way that you believe in careers. And I can say that I've had conversations over the years where I don't always necessarily agree with, from a career perspective, what some believe on our campus, but I also have to respect what people share and what they think and how they view it. Because through those interactions, I've also learned that I don't know everything. And there are different ways to approach problems, to approach challenges. And so I think that that for me has also been a humbling experience that I'm not going to say that I'm the smartest person in the room, but I think that when you listen to others talk, you get to pick up different perspectives and different viewpoints, and that has helped. And so the other thing that I think is that individuals believe that a lot of times they have to do it in mass, in a mass number. And I think that when you're trying to build these things is pick one or two. So the goal shouldn't be, I'm going to hit 100% in my first year especially if you plan on being somewhere <laughs> for a long period of time or a couple of years, say this year, we're going to get to know three departments and we're going to get to know their faculty. And we're going to get to know all the individuals in the department. And we're going to find out what it is that they're interested in because you might take a department like business and you could have faculty members that have varied, varied interests from their field of research to whatever it is that they're doing. And so you would say, okay, I want to pick these three departments. And then because of that, that's going to lead us into hopefully working much, much more closely with the students from those three departments. And then in year two, you reevaluate and assess where that relationship is with those departments to see, okay, have we made some inroads? Have we impacted those students? And then, okay, the next year we're going to add now three to five more departments. And so you begin to slowly build that network. But I think that fear of you know, will they work with us? Will they not? And I think that if you never ask or if you don't approach a department, then you're just not going to know. And I think that's the hardest part, the ask. Yeah, it is. I can see that. Kind of on that note of outreach and, and reaching out to new people across campus, aside from going to some of these events, what are some of the ways that you reach out to new people? Is it email? Are you going to their office? What does that look like for you? So it's, it's a combination of everything. And so I think a lot of times it's the email, but it's a very clarified email as to what we're looking for. I just read something today, which was very, very, very interesting. And it said, don't waste people's time by delivering an email that's very dancey and fancy. Get to your point. Tell people what is it you want, because if it's not something that's clear, then it's not a priority for people to answer. So that is one way. I think the other ways by, and I think for me, when I do the outreach is in person. So if I'm at an event or there's a faculty appreciation dinner or an award ceremony, and I do see the faculty member, I'm going to go over and introduce myself. I'm going to talk, oh, I, I know that, or I've been told that you're from this department and that this is your background, that you are focused on whatever it is, ligaments, or I'm just using an example. <laughs> and then you can say, oh, how did you get into that? And why did you study that? Or why did you get your degree in that area? And then just at least trying to get to know from an academic perspective why that person chose their field. So that is in person. A lot of times we do some outreach as well through some of our social platforms and just that's more of the masses. But I think the the individual stuff, it's either email or it is in person. In person tends to be the most effective as long as it's for us, if it's with a purpose. If I'm already at an event or if I see, because a lot of times I'll go to a basketball game and I'll see faculty members sitting in the crowd or I'll see somebody who works in a particular office sitting in the crowd. And so I don't bother them during the game because, of course, they want to watch the game the same way that I do. But during halftime or the beginning of the game, hey, how's it going? How you doing? This is who I am. Or the other one, which I have also found, which is very effective, is when another individual on the campus introduces you mm, to that person. Yeah. Hey, have you met? Have you met Junior from the Career Center? Or hey, have you met Doctor So and So from this this particular academic department? And so slowly. Once you start having that conversation, that individual said to you, we need to have a greater conversation because I want to know how to help my students. Or I'm advising these five students and they're exploratory and I really just want to get some more resources to, to impact those students. So I think it's a combo. It is a combo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So when you're having those conversations, like those first interactions, how much are you telling them about the Career Center? Are you just kind of introducing yourself, saying your job title, and that's it for that first interaction? Or yeah, what do you tell it, them? It is. They're not very long conversations. And so again, it's just, hi, I'm Junior Delgado. I'm from the Career Center. 
But then it's, oh, so you're here, you're just, or you're new to Westfield, or you, you've been here for two years, and I just, I, we, I've never met you, but I've heard from your, some of the students that have talked about you, and they enjoy your classes and whatnot. And then I just, I start prying by asking a lot of different questions around their, their area of study, why they chose their major, where did they get their degree from, just so that, that I can build some common bonds with them, because then it's not all about business. And again, I can't come into it at, like a moving train at a thousand miles a minute and say like, <laughs> hey, we're from the Career Center, and I want to talk to you about careers because I know that they're going to tune me out. Yeah, no one wants to talk about that at the basketball game. <laughs> no, so they're not going to, they're going to tune me out. But I think that if I ask just a couple of questions and say, hey, at some point, can we get together for a meeting or can I, can we have you come over to the, to the career center and have com a conversation, a greater conversation with us? And I think that's very effective. So it's one of those things where it's quick. I try and really measure the time frame because if I know that halftime is about to be over, they want to go get some a refreshment. They want to come back, sit down. Um, so I come in with a purpose, I think is, is where we're getting to right now. So you have to have a purpose with that conversation as well. Okay. Do you follow up with them at all later oh, on yes. or? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it works both ways. I either follow up or the person, or sometimes the, the faculty member will beat me to it or staff member will beat me to it and say, Hey, remember the conversation we had? I'd like to have a greater conversation. What are the resources for? I don't even know whatever major they're going to say, like, what are the resources for this particular major? And then from there that slowly starts to build and then they'll come back again and again and we notice they keep coming back because they want more information and so i, I feel like once we hook them once i think we can continue to get them over and over to come and use our services and get to know our team okay gotcha that makes sense junior how are you leveraging some of these allies that you built over the years how are you leveraging that in your work as director of the career center so i think that if on some campuses when you leverage some of these allies it, it some campuses will call them career champions which I think is an aim. And for us, I don't think it's an official title that we've given anybody, but we do have many, many career champions across our campus. We can always count on the same faculty members. We can always count on the same staff members that really do. They're almost an extension of the career center and they will share our message. The other thing that I think has worked for us, which we've noticed every year is we continue to get asked to come and speak in more and more classrooms, which is our direct pipeline to students. And so because of that, we continue to see new faculty members. We continue to see new academic departments that will invite us in. We've built relationships across the entire campus over many, many years. And I think that our team is very intentional. So it is something that really makes me happy when I see our team members sharing our message, spreading the message, because we have worked with, I don't even know, 15, 16 different academic departments. We get invited into something like 40 to 70, it really depends on the semester classrooms per semester. Wow. <laughs> but then we've taken it one step further where what we've done is we've also been intentional about partnering with students. So we've partnered with many of the clubs and clubs will contact us now and want us to come in and do presentations around whatever career topic of interest. Um, another one that we have found, there's one group that we're working on campus with, um, and I just had a meeting this morning. And one of the things that we've done is it isn't a pre-planned program. So we don't go in with anything for presenting. What we do is we just say, here's three minutes about the career center. And then we give them a note card. We tell them not to put their name on it and ask any question they want. Mm. And what we have found through that is that as I, we go through those note cards and we start to answer the questions, sometimes seven of the whatever, 30 note cards have the exact same question on it, which really makes the students feel well, because then they also feel I'm not alone in this, or I'm not the only person who had that question. And so some of those programs have been genuine because what we have found is that when we do some of those, we see an influx of students that come in for individual one-on-one -on -one appointments because, hey, you were great in answering that question or your team member was great in answering that question. I'd like to talk more about that. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know why I was thinking this, but when you said build allies, I was focusing on faculty, but there's the student clubs. I'm sure there's administrators. Yeah. And it's, so it's a little bit of everything. And I think from a career center perspective, and if you go back to I mean, what we started talking about, which was career ev careers everywhere, mm -hmm. career everywhere, that again, isn't just our students. That's impacting every facet of our university. And I think that the one thing that I would be remiss if I don't say is that that career everywhere impacts everyone from the maintainer all the way up to the president of the university. And that is important because many times I don't, and I hope that this is not happening, but I think it does that, pe that some of our people in some of those service industries get dismissed. And those are people that are having some great, great conversations with students. They have great conversations with faculty and staff about careers. 
Um, Because you'll see students, if you're a maintainer in a building and you happen to be vacuuming and you stop for a student to walk by, hey, how's it going? And they start to see you every day. There's that, I I know who you are now because I see you every day. What are you studying? What are you doing here at school? What do you want to do when you leave here? So those career conversations are happening at every facet of this university. Uh, So again, it's important to, for me, to understand that the message that we share isn't just for students, isn't just for faculty, isn't just for staff, because we all have a part to play in educating our students and making sure that when they leave this university, that they are at least prepared for life or ready to undertake whatever they're going to do when they move on. I love that. <laughs> I love that perspective so much. And it it makes me think back to my time working at a public university. I worked in marketing there on the central marketing team. And it's true, like even though I was in marketing, not necessarily a faculty member or anything like that, I still felt very connected to the mission. Like any student I interviewed for marketing content, I was genuinely interested in their story. I wanted to, several of them I'm still connected with, I think on LinkedIn and Facebook, and it's fun to watch them grow and shine and see what they do. So I, I think that, yeah, it's absolutely true. Everybody on campus is hopefully dedicated to that mission. Yeah, and I think that people... Maybe they do or maybe they don't. Sometimes it takes a little bit to realize the difference that you're making in students' lives. And I'm only talking about students right now, but I think faculty and staff are really impacted by this because as we've seen over the years, staff or faculty that get invited to weddings, faculty or staff that get invited to some sort of family function, and that is the truest form of you made an impact in this. You really career everywhere this person (laughs) effectively because now they're inviting you into their personal space, into their personal life and saying, I want you to share this moment with my family or with my friends because you had such a great impact on my life while I was in school. And so that happens across this country at many universities and everybody, I would hope, and I think has a story very similar to that. Yeah. You're just making me smile because I invited two of my professors to my wedding. (laughs) So yeah, that's very true. And I still meet several of them for coffee on a regular occasion. So, oh, yeah. And, and they, I'll tell you, one of the things that, that staff and faculty love on campuses is when alums come back that they worked with or they happen to be in the area and they want to meet with you and share with you. And, and then they start talking about their stories from when they were students. I mean, we just had an alum that came back the other day and he's very well known on the news uh, in the Boston area. And when he comes back to campus, there's still two or three professors that are here from his time. And he talks about that and says, those were some of the best years of my life and the memories that he has from the professors. And and it's funny because even the professors that are still here that knew his name, call him by his nickname, which is even, (laughs) which for me was funny because I'm only, I'm always so used to just being so formal with this alum, but it was, it's interesting to see those stories. And, and again, those stories happen in the hundreds on college campuses, including ours. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I was just thinking back to one of those professors that I invited to my wedding also called me by a nickname (laughs) and still does to this day. (laughs) Too funny. So this is kind of a natural segue to the next question, but I imagine after 20 years of building all of these relationships with all of these different people, I am willing to bet that there are some stories or people or memories that have really stuck with you. Would you be willing to share some of your favorites? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, And as I was thinking about this, earlier today, obviously I knew the question was coming, so I thought about (laughs) this, but (laughs) because I wanted to come up with some, I I mean, and one of the things is one of the students, it's really ongoing and it is happening presently. And even this morning, I met the same student again. And so I'm working with this student who has never in his entire life owned a suit or owned a sports coat. And we, from time to time, we'll bring in our sports coats, put them in the closet. And the other day he was talking about interviewing and potentially looking at doing the Washington Center internship program and going, I think I need clothing for that program or I need something better than my sweatpants and my, and my bat and my hoodies. And, and we said, yeah, probably you do. And he came in and we, ha- and I happened to say, what, what is your size and what do you wear? He goes, I have no idea. So, I mean, it's to that level that he had no idea what kind of size jacket. And so a lot of times we make these assumptions that we think they know. But sometimes students don't know. And so I had him try a jacket on. It was a jacket that wasn't being worn and it was just sitting in my closet for students. And to give him, I gave him the jacket. And one of the things is the expression on his face of joy and happiness to say like, wow, this is, I've got a professional jacket now that I can wear. And we keep ties here for some of our students that want to use ties. 
and giving them three ties that match the jacket. Um, he said, thank you, because this has made such a big difference in my life already having this professional jacket that I knew nothing about. I didn't even know what size I was. And now he has an, an indication of what size he is and the jacket fit perfectly to a T. So it was probably meant for the student. <laughs> and the student came in today and we're talking about, again, that Washington Center program and being able to apply for the program. It's something that will become a reality. And the words that came out of his mouth this morning, you don't understand. This is life changing for me, which was amazing. And the student really got choked up. And to me, that's so powerful to say like a program like this for some might be just a consideration. And for this student to say, this is life changing for me. My family has never even been anywhere near Washington, DC, which is really interesting. So that, that to me is very powerful. I had another student, which I think the mom is still very upset with me, but I had a student that I worked with and she wanted to go into teaching. And so a lot of times, especially in Massachusetts, a lot of our Massachusetts students don't think about leaving. And she was presented with an opportunity to go to Arizona and teach in Arizona. And to this day, this is what now, six years, seven years, she's still teaching in Arizona. And I remember meeting her mom at graduation and she said, oh, you're the man responsible for sending my daughter away. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's too happy uh, with me to this day because of that. Um, so again, just being able to open that student side to say like, you don't have to stay in Massachusetts. There are other opportunities that you can look at. And so being able to present these things when students aren't necessarily um, geared into what else is out there. So that's another one. I can also say there was a student that I worked with, and this one was funny because I still remind her of this. And in her sophomore year, she had come in and she wanted to participate in a program. And the first words out of her mouth when she sat down is, hi, is this only a program for rich kids? That was the first words out of her mouth. Whoa. Said, I said, no. Speaking of I direct communication. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, it is not. There is aid available. The student was able in their senior year to participate in the program. And now they work for the program, which is super interesting. So talk about coming full circle. And I still mention that and we get a good laugh out of that um, when I do interact with them at the, in this program. So that is interesting. And then probably the last one that I will say, this happened to my colleague the other day. And so again, it just, it's everybody is impacted in a way that we make a difference in students' lives. And she had been working with a student and help the student with the resumes, with cover letters, and looking at opportunities. And the student was participating in an undergraduate research conference and contacted our, my colleague and said, would you be willing to come to see me at the research? She said, absolutely. So she schedules herself out, went over to the conference. And then, lo and behold, I'm, I'm looking at LinkedIn, and there's a picture of, the, of our colleague with the student and the students thanking her for making a difference, for being there, for listening, and for providing guidance and serving as a mentor. So that, to me, was so powerful to see when the student is actually posting this and posting the picture of them standing together next to a research project was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. That's amazing. Talk about just an incredible real life result yeah. of all this work that you're all doing. Yeah, it's and again, and those are just a few of so many stories of over the years. I mean, if you think about if I think about 22 plus years of being here, it's there, there's a lot of those. And it's I think that my mission and my calling here is that I, I get truly my most happiest. And I probably did say this to you, but I get my most happiest when that student comes in and says, Junior, I got the job. I landed the internship. I have that fellowship. I got this experience. I'm going to graduate school and here's where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm getting into law school and here's where I'm going. I passed the MTELs. So now I can start student teaching. Those things truly, truly make me happy because that is a game changer for the students. And that really does propel them to their next step of where they're headed. And I imagine all of these like genuine interactions and just positive relationships with students, especially, they're probably talking to their peers like, hey, have you talked with Junior in career services? He really helped me. Oh, the, I, I can't say that enough. That's like in anything in life, right? If you think about even like stores, if you think about shopping, if you think about vacation destinations, if one person tells the next, that next person will tell the next and the next, and then it snowballs. And a lot of times I'll say to students, because we ask the question, like, who told you about the career center? What are you doing here? Well, this person told me to come see my colleague. This person told me to come see your other colleague. And so we know that that word of mouth is really getting out and students are coming to see us because their friends have had a positive experience. They've had their questions answered, or they have found somebody that they can work with in their time here that's going to help them or direct them career-wise. Okay. Have you seen similar results with your work with faculty, staff, administrators in terms of that word of mouth really playing into it? Absolutely. 
apps. Oh, I can't even <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one again for us is so key. I mean, students are pivotal. They're the reason why we're here. But I know that if I don't have a relationship with a set group of students from a set department, if I can get at that one faculty member and that one faculty member really develops a relationship with us and understands what it is that we do, that faculty member will tell the next faculty member, will tell the next faculty member in the department. And the next thing you know is we're getting an email or somebody's giving us a phone call. Hey, I spoke to this, my colleague, and they said that you do X. We'd like you to do the same thing for our classroom and come in and, and present on that topic. And so that's why I think our classroom presentations have increased every semester because we're making so many inroads with other colleagues and they know that we're genuine. We're not there to, to steal, I, I call it stealing their show. We're not there to be a distraction. We're there to really complement what it is that our faculty are doing and share the message of, because you're an English major, here are the resources that you can use for being an English major. Here's where some of our other English majors that have graduated from this institution have gone. And I, and I believe that our faculty really appreciate that, that level of transparency and that communication with them. So again, it, it just, once we get one hooked, <laughs> again, it, we get the next one and the next one. And then what we've found, which is really funny, is when we're having a conversation with one faculty member, one department, and then all of a sudden they'll say that we'll get a call from another faculty member in a completely different department. Hey, I was talking to this faculty member and they said, you do A, B, C, D. And I'm going, wait, and I'm trying to put the connection together. Wait, when, <laughs> would you, when do you two interact? Oh, at the last general faculty meeting, we saw each other and we were talking. And so that to me, again, it's, it's what I always say, if we don't develop relationships with students or if we don't have a relationship, I can almost guarantee that students are going to or are having those relationships with those faculty members. And I need to build those bridges with faculty members because, again, if we want to impact a greater number, sometimes those are the folks that students are speaking with. Yeah, I'm hearing that pretty consistently yeah. across these interviews that it's faculty are just kind of the key pivotal part of this whole puzzle. They are the, uh, what's that word? The gate, the gatekeepers. <laughs> to <all this. laughs> so we definitely the gatekeepers need that. to knowledge. Yes. So we, <laughs> so we need to build relationships. And again, it can't be about us wanting to get our agenda across. We have to collaborate. We have to partner with, with our colleagues. Right. Well, I was even just thinking when you were talking about those classroom presentations that you do, the content that you're presenting, it, it's really lending credibility to their subject matter. If you're like, here's what English majors have gone on to do, here's the kind of jobs they have, here's the skills they have, that lends credibility to that professor's class and hopefully gets the students more excited about participating. Absolutely. And so we see that a lot. And I used English. It's funny that I used English because that's where we see a lot of that, um, because a lot of the work that they're doing in some of the classes, they connect to real life. So when we're able to come in and share some of those things, it just resonates with students much, much more clearly. We're trying to replicate that within every single department, within every single faculty member. Sounds like a lot of work, but fun work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It's something that we definitely enjoy. So what advice would you give to other career services leaders who want to build allies across campus like you've done? This is a great, great question. And I think that, again, longevity plays a part in it. So I think that if you have been on a college campus for a good number of years and you haven't stepped outside of the realm of where you work to get to know people, then to me, that's something that you want to evaluate. But if you're just coming in fresh and you want to get to meet people, well, first, I think you have to get to know your team. You have to get to know the people in your department. And here's why. Because your team members as individuals are also out and about on campus meeting people. Not only are they meeting students, they're meeting other faculty, they're meeting other staff. And so you're not going to know who's being impacted or, or who, is his, who are the people that you're working with if you don't have those conversations with your own staff, because you might have a goal or something strategic that you want to do. And you're saying, oh, wait a second, I didn't know that my staff member who's this advisor is working with six faculty members in that particular area. Perfect. We can go at it this way. And so I think that getting to know your team first and what it is, who their allies are, it's when you really think about that, isn't that networking? Yes, it is. <laughs> so you're getting so you're getting to know who your team is to find out who their network is because you're always trying to expand and grow your own network. That is something for every leader in terms of getting to know. And then the other part of what I would say for every leader that wants to do this is again, what what are your areas of interest? What is it on the college campus that excites you? Because I I would venture to guess, and I'm gonna probably say this in the nicest way that Junior Delgado knows how to say, my hope. My hope is that if we all work on college campuses, that we're still excited, that we still come to work with energy, and that we want to see all of our students, every single student, succeed on our college campus. So I think that in, 
being able to understand what your area of interest is at a greater level and then connecting with those so that if you are interested in government and politics, well, most campuses have a student government association. Why not make that the natural first connection that you have to students? Because again, you're going to have a great number of majors that attend that association and you want your message to be spread quickly throughout campus. And again, it comes better from student to student. And if you're impacting different majors, but it is an area of your interest. Um, so that's why I think that you see a lot of different career staff professionals that are involved in a lot of areas. The other thing that I want to also share, which to me is super important, is that we've gone about trying to really impact particular populations on our campus by being very, very intentional. Because I know one of the things that we talk about today is equity, mm -hmm. making sure that our students of color have access to all the same services or understanding. And I know that there was a class we had the other day where um, a student wrote in and said, well, how are you serving our students of color on this campus? And I had to sit there and think about, okay, how do I have this conversation with the student and share everything that we're doing? And I think my first immediate answer is that when we career counsel, we career counsel to the individual. We don't use a cookie cutter approach. I think that if a student comes and is interested in a particular area, we're going to counsel that student. Some of the things that we've done we partner with one of our programs, which is our urban education department, um, which has, I don't know, three, four, 500 students that are involved in that program. So we work closely with the advisors. We work with the director. We have also partnered with our TRIO program, which is that federally funded program. And we've gotten to know the advisors and we work with students. And the one thing about those areas, which is really nice, and we also partner with our veterans association here on campus, because that's super, super important as well we actually host hours out of their offices. So we will go to their actual centers because one of my strategies that I wanted to do is I started to notice that sometimes some of those populations, some of the populations don't necessarily come to the career center. And so I said to my team one day, if they're not gonna come to us, we're gonna go to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, I call it guerrilla marketing. We're gonna go to the streets. Yeah, so That's where we have <laughs> to go. If people are out somewhere else and they're not coming here, we've done that with our athletes. We've gone right to the athletic facility to host counseling hours for our students so that they can meet with us and say like, oh, I didn't go there. And then hopefully, hopefully we've demystif de demystified that the career center is not a scary, scary place. And we've noticed that once we meet them where they are and in their space, which tends to be sometimes their safe space, they are more apt to come and see us. Why don't you come see me in my office and we'll sit down and we'll meet. And then they're more apt to come in here. And, and I would say in the last two years, personally, just for myself, and I've seen way more students of color. The numbers have definitely increased in the students of color that are coming into the career center. And again, I don't know what that, maybe that's the message we're selling. Maybe it's because they see another face of color and there's comfortability in that, but I'm happy that they're getting here. And they're not just meeting with me, they're meeting with my other colleagues as well. And that really makes me happy that they're getting here and they're coming in and they're taking advantage of the resources and services. So that's an amazing result. <laughs> yeah. Again, we want to keep growing because we want to have all of them come. And the one thing that I've said, and I think my colleagues, and hopefully they agree with me across the country, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> will agree with me across the country. A lot of times um, I have found that we have on our campuses all different varying levels of students. We have students that are highly motivated. We have students that are in the middle. They're somewhat interested, somewhat not interested. And we have other students that are just not interested. And something that I've said on my campus, and I think when I've had other conversations with the colleagues, we want to impact all students, all. Because I know that my highly motivated student here is going to come in. They're going to go to the career fairs. They're going to go to the networking nights. They're going to show up to everything. I want all students to feel the same way, to feel that excitement, to feel that energy, especially we see it when it really resonates with a student. And they're like, Junior, I got three interviews for three different internships and I'm so excited, but I'm super, super nervous. What do I do? And I know that light bulb has gone off because I had a student today that I met with and said to me, I got to take this stuff much, much more serious, but I'm geared in this now. I got to remove some of my other things that I'm doing, which I'm wasting time. And I got to really focus on this stuff because this is my future. I had a student say that to me this morning. That's a light bulb moment if I've ever heard one. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, you get it now. Again, to me, it's we want to see all of our students succeed. And when that light bulb goes off, we are so excited. You have to correct me if I'm wrong. But in addition to some of this like in-person work you're doing to improve access to kind of get career services out there, y'all have kind of improved access to your web presence and your digital presence. Yes. So two, right? Abs oh, absolutely. 100%. One can't happen without the other. Um, yeah. it, it is a very different time 
accessibility is very important to students. And we know that some can't come to campus. We know that we have students from all parts of the world taking classes here as well as other states. And so a lot of our content has to be both. It has to be virtual. Some of our networking nights are happening virtually as well. Um, and what we've noticed with some of those is because, for example, Westfield State, we're two hours from Boston. And so a lot of times when we want some of our alums from the eastern portion of the state, hosting a virtual program seems to make much, much more sense because then we're getting geographically and different industries that we normally would not have if we've just brought those folks to campus. So that to me is also interesting. And then the big one, I think for us, which is going to be a game changer, um, we have recently signed on with Uconnect. And so I don't know if I can say this on the air or not, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be releasing our platform, which I think there is a tremendous amount of virtual content on there. And there's content that anybody can access 24 seven. And the most exciting part of that for us and for our team is that the content is going to be specific to each student, which is the message that we always sell. So if a student has an interest in A, B, C, and D, they're going to be able to find that through the platform. So we're, we're super happy and excited, but yes, you cannot have virtual without the in-person or the in-person without virtual because all of our students are, they're consuming our content in so many different which ways. And we want to be able to meet those needs as well. It isn't just all in person. Yeah. I suppose that's kind of one way to start building a relationship with someone these days is put the information out there and let them come to you a little bit in addition to all the work you're doing to go to them as well. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll say this. So one of the things that we have found is we also encourage students to come see us. So when, if a student emails us, then we want to have a virtual meeting or we want to have a phone conversation and we'll encourage if they, if they send out an email message that just says, I just have this quick question on X. For us, it's then the response is, hey, thank you for reaching out. We're so happy to reach out to the Career Center. Tell me a time that you're available so we can have a quick conversation. We can go into greater detail on that and we can give you some additional resources. And so that we have found that we've been able to develop some relationships in that way just with light encouragement, not a hard press or a hard sell, but we'd like to talk to you. And I'm going to say that probably 90, 95% of the time, those students are, are very receptive. That's awesome. And they'll respond back and say, sure, when are you available? So I think that that also is the encouragement because a lot of times I, I have found that I think offices sometimes or different places on a college campus where students can be very intimidating or scary. And if you're able to take that and demystify that, like, okay, they're friendly people, they're there to assist, they want to have a conversation with you. It makes students a little bit easier when students know that we're approachable. I think that's also important because a lot of times students will see, oh, I can't approach this person because this person is the director of X, Y. And I think sometimes we even as people forget that we're all human beings. And so as a human being, we want our students to be able to approach us and be able to talk to us about whatever it is that they're thinking about from a career perspective. And, and sometimes I'll tell you this, Meredith, the question that a student might ask might not even be career related. It could be about, I don't know how to find this particular office on campus, who the person is that I should talk to because I want to deal with, you know, I need to pay a bill or I'm, I'm behind on a bill. And just being able to make that connection for the student has helped us build relationships as well, because then the student knows, oh, I can come back and see them and they're going to help. And then they start to see the Career Center as a resource and a service. Yeah. It goes back to what you were saying earlier about being interested in, and knowledgeable about more than just their work, than just their classes. Absolutely. Junior, is there anything else about our topic of building allies across campus that you would like to add that we haven't already covered? I would just say that it's encouragement um, to the people that are doing this work every day. My colleagues, friends, continue the, to do the good work that you are doing. So it's more encouragement. Continue to do the good work that you are doing. Even when you think that a student might not be impacted, they are impacted. Continue to serve your campuses to the best and making a difference because at the end of all of this, whether it's my campus or yours, this is the workforce of the future. That's all I'm going to say on that. So keep up the great work, everyone because it is appreciated. For sure, it's a great encouragement. So Junior, if people want to learn more from you or connect with you, uh, where's a good place for them to do that? I think the two best places would be LinkedIn. So I am on LinkedIn. And the other one is they can email me directly at jdelgado at westfield.ma.edu. Those are probably the two of the, I would say the vehicles that I check the most regularly throughout my workday. Perfect, and for those listening, we'll make sure to include that email address and the link to his LinkedIn in the show notes. 
So Junior, final question. So at the end of every interview, I like to do ask a question and leave a question kind of thing or answer a question, leave a question. So I'll ask you a question that our last guest left for you, and then you'll leave a question for the next guest. So our last guest that I talked to was Josh Domitrovich of Penn West. He left the question, are you truly creating an equitable, sustainable, and accessible process within your industry, career center, or department? Reflect on that. And is there an area that you could really improve to make sure that the three Career Everywhere tenants are hit? Big question. So I would say thank you, Josh, for that question, because that question is a mouthful. (laughs) Um, But I, I did jot some notes down, and I would say for us, I think that the importance has been in building inroads throughout our campus. So we're very intentional in building relationships with departments, building relationships with student clubs and groups. So I think that's one. I think we're always looking at ways or different ways to serve our students by talking to students and asking what works best or doesn't work best for students. And the same with faculty members and staff when we're trying to accomplish some sort of goal, asking them what works best. The other one is that we're looking at all student populations as well. And that is everything from our first year population to students that are returning back to school, to our veterans. And one population that we're really focused on as well as our exploratory students, which is those students that are that are truly undecided, whether they're first year, second years. The other thing that I would say is being accessible to share our message and our story. That's another way that we're trying to really be equitable and sustainable. And so I think you always want to be selling the message of the Career Center because every college and university has so much changeover where you see presidents come in or new vice presidents or deans or whatever it might be. So being accessible to share your story and your message and have conversations wherever you're asked to speak on it. And then the other one for us that I think we've looked at is being, again, intentional and in de- developing relationships with in collaborations with new departments. And for us, some of those have been working on a nursing career fair, health sciences, which we're doing a lot of collaboration with health sciences now because we have a large, large number of students. So I think those are the ways. And the final part of that question is, for me, if I could improve on those three tenants, I would want to have a specific staff member. This would be my wish to have a staff member that could really focus on all these areas. They could focus on and building a strategy around being sustainable, being equitable, because a lot of times we are being asked to do so many different things. And I think that having a staff member that's really geared and focused to that would really help this office out. All right. Great answer. So, Junior, what question would you like to leave for the next guest? Oh, I feel bad for the next person. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) So my question is this, whoever the individual is, when you decide to leave or retire from your place of employment, how are three ways that individuals in that organization will describe you or what will they say was your lasting impression? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a packed question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, that's good, though. It'll require some reflection and hopefully some positive thoughts about how people will remember them. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Junior, for taking the time to be on the podcast and for talking with me today. I just really enjoyed this conversation, and I'm excited to see how our audience can use your advice and everything that you share today to build better relationships across campus. Awesome. Thank you again for having me. I so greatly appreciate it. And again, Career Everywhere is we're all responsible. Every single person is responsible, whether you're on a college campus, you're an employer partner, Career Everywhere is we're all responsible for that. Couldn't have said it better myself. (laughs) Well, thanks again, Junior, and uh, have a good rest of your week. Thank you. Likewise. That's all for this episode of Career Everywhere. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit subscribe and rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.